Hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Chinta. I am Rajdeep and in today's video we'll look at a problem from the CMI BSc entrance uh which is a geometry problem and it essentially is a reconstruction problem where given the midpoint quadrilateral of a given of a quadrilateral can you reconstruct the quadrilateral back uh and i hope you enjoy it. so let's get into it so this problem is from the bsc entrance of cmi from the year 2012 in this year uh there were no objective problems it was all subjective this is the second problem of the second part part b part a is a classic problem that many students may have encountered uh in their school geometry curriculum it says that if abcd r is a convex quadrilateral uh then the midpoint quadrilateral is a parallelogram with half the area of abcd we'll quickly go through a proof of this but our main focus will be part b so for part a we have a c d c D and go for a general quadrilateral and look at the midpoints. So say this is the midpoint, this is the midpoint, this is the midpoint, and this is the midpoint. So what is the midpoint quadrilateral? It's this one. And already we can start to see that this does look like a parallelogram. You know, accepting some drawing issues on my part. So if this is A B C D, then we have E F G H. How do we prove something like this? This is a classic example of the midpoint theorem. So, for example, if I draw in this diagonal B D, by the midpoint theorem, since H is the midpoint of A D and E is the midpoint of A B, midpoint theorem implies that H E is parallel to db and by a very same logic fg is parallel to bd since f is the midpoint of bc g is the midpoint of dc so fg must be parallel to db which is also parallel to fg hence hg and fg are parallel by very similar arguments using this diagonal ac we can get that ef is parallel to ac is parallel to dj so hence the opposite pairs of sides in this quadrilateral efgh are parallel hence efgh is a parallel ram very nice now how about how about the proving the area condition this is again a classic example of a similarity result If you guys know and maybe I can quickly recap it for you if you have two triangles which are similar it just means that they are scaled versions of each other so uh you know each side of this triangle is c times the side in the smaller triangle you know you can give them names so ef is c times ab bc is uh, fg is c times bc and so on it's just a zooming in by a factor of c so if you zoom in lengths by a factor of c how much to area scale by this kind of goes back goes into like a discussion of dimensionality but i'll keep it short it's not very hard to prove the point is that if the if if lengths scale by c in this will in particular imply that the altitudes also scale by c we just zooming in right so every all lengths scale by c so if the altitude increases by a factor of c and the base increases by a factor of c the area scales by a factor of c square right because the area is half into base into height so you have c multiplied with itself twice c square in this case i know that aeh and adb are similar and what is the scaling factor it's 2 ADB is twice as large as A A H. So if you just zoom in by a factor of two, that's what's going to happen. So in particular, I get that the area of A H is one fourth the area of 
ADB. Right. Similarly, the area of CGF. I'll draw these regions out. So AF, we're done. Similarly, CGF is one for the area of BDC. Finally, uh, we can add these two to get that AH plus CGS equals one fourth of the area of the entire quadrilateral, right? ABD, BDC add up to the area of the entire quadrilateral. Why did we do this? The point is that the area of EFGH directly is hard to get at. So instead, we find the area of the region except EFGH of the green and blue parts. Right? And so, if we can show that that part is half of the area of ABCD, EFGH is also going to be the half the area of ABCD. Right? So maybe take a moment to internalize that. So by very similar arguments, the area of BEF, this triangle, and DGH are also BEF, DGF is also one fourth of ABCD. If I sum this entire thing, green plus blue regions, the sum of those areas is half of ABCD, one fourth plus one fourth. But green plus blue regions are just the area of ABCD minus the area of EFGH. So this implies that area of ABCD minus area of EFGH is equal to half the area of ABCD. And hence EFGH is half the area of ABCD. Very nice. We move on to the next part. It says that if you fix the midpoint quadrilateral in this case to on the coordinate plane where e, has a, e is at the origin, f is at 0, comma, minus 1, g is at 1, comma, minus 1, and h is at 1, comma, 0. So if we we'll, we'll see shortly that this is just a square. Find all points a is equal to p, comma, q in the first quadrant such that e f g h is the midpoint quadrilateral of some convex quadrilateral a b c d. So, for this, we will draw our coordinates. So, our E is the origin, 0, 0. Our F, if we go back and see what it says, F is 0, minus 1. I'll not, I mean, okay, we can label the coordinates if you like. So, similarly, G is minus one comma zero comma minus one like that and h is one comma minus one so efgh is a square uh yeah so first of all the first part implies that this is not a contradiction that if efgh was some non-parallelogram quadrilateral there would be no such points in this implies that there could be now it comes down to how many degrees of freedom we have. There's this notion of the degree of freedom which we'll see soon. Can I choose any two points A and B? So we have, we have the free choice of A. Can we, do we also have a free choice of B and C for that matter? Can we choose any two points A and B such that if there's points C and D, such that A, B, C, D is the original quadrilateral of which E, F, G, H is the midpoint quadrilateral? Turns out, no. The only degree of freedom is that of one point that's that's a degree of freedom one to show you what i mean choose some point a here right if e was, was is going to be the midpoint of a b i only need to reflect a across a to get b that's what it means to be a midpoint right so so b is fixed and it makes sense that soon everything will be fixed so the only choice is that of a so if A is, if we fix A to be some P comma Q, this fixes B to be minus P comma minus Q, since we reflected it over the origin. Similarly, the other point, this is B, this is B, the other point is going to be D, right? If I reflect it over this point, I'll get D. Finally, if I reflect 
B over G or C D over H. I'll get the same point. This is guaranteed by our first part. And this is C. So the really the only choice is that of A. Now what can A be? That is the question. So really the only restriction A there is on ABCD is that it needs to be a convex quadrilateral. Clearly, if I'm in this unit square, and I choose any point, the program I just showed you of reflecting A across E and F to get B and D, and then reflecting one of those points across G or H respectively to get C, I can repeat this program as long as I'm within this square. Even on the boundary, it will fail. This is a quick check I'd like you to run. So, P comma Q, so all points inside the inside this unit square, not on the boundary, will work. Now we have to figure out what whether it's the only set part of the unit, of the first quadrant which works. In particular, if I choose a different point outside this unit square, what goes wrong? Let's see. So if I choose this point and I try to, so for clarity, I'll delete A, B, C, D. If I choose A outside, somewhere over here. If I try try to reflect it over E, I get this. I try to reflect over F, I get this. Already something bad has happened. The point is that we want the reflection of A over F to be to the right of H. But let's still see what this gives us. So this is A. This gives us B. And this gives us D. Now, you want to reflect B across G, and we get which is the same as if I were to reflect D across H. This is C. So we get a self-intersecting quadrilateral, which is not allowed. We want it to be convex, right? So you can see that if I'm outside this unit square, I'll either get a concave quadrilateral, which happens if I'm uh, in one of in one of these regions. So if I choose a point outside this unit square, but within this region, if I choose a point here or here, it's not very hard to see that uh, the quadrilateral I'll get, even though it won't be self-intersecting like this, it will still be concave. It'll end up looking something like this. Also not allowed. So... This is more of a trial and error thing, and you can make this argumentation concrete by calculating what these coordinates are, and then arguing that, for example, B must be to the left of G, D must be to the right of H. These will put concrete restric restrictions on what P and or on what P comma Q can be. And if you work it out, it's very simple to see, but it must be inside this unit square. So the answer, to the second part, is all points P comma Q such that. P is less than 1 and Q is less than 1. That's all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you have uh, a little more clarity on the results that we used here, such as midpoint theorem, similarity, and basic coordinate geometry based reflections and such. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.